Oh, sorry, man. I don't know what my yawning is all about. I've been working out really hard. Full disclosure. When you see <laughs> me, dude, you're going to be like, whoa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but as a result, uh, today I'm feeling a little physical toll. So let me just understand. The workouts this. were supposed you're to be. You're saying you've gotten stronger. so strong. It's caused you to become tired. Like your body can't physically <laughs> pump enough oxygen to all those muscles. So it's exhausting. I should you. have eaten a bigger burrito at lunch. Such a funny idea of a hunger back. Oh, I'm so tired because I'm so huge. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all these biceps are really messing with my brain. <laughs> Dude, it's exhausting being this fit. This is Nick. This is Jack. Welcome back. It is Monday, February 12th. And today's pod it is the best one yet. It's a tea boy. The top three pop business news stories you need to know today. I'm sorry, Eddie's one second. Jack just told me he's too tired because he's too strong right now. Is that <laughs> no, correct? I said, I said I've been working out a lot recently and I'm kind of exhausted right now. So Jack may not be at his best right now because his biceps are too huge. I'm still trying to put this together. I'm not mathing it, man. <laughs> I've been working out and getting so strong that I'm feeling weak right now. Yeah, that's the, that's the irony. Jack's in such good shape. He's in terrible shape. First story for today's show. I know you can pull it together. What do we got? For our first story, Fortnite, the blockbuster online video game just got a one and a half billion dollar investment from Disney. Apparently the metaverse isn't dead. The metaverse is Fortnite. For our second story, Build-A-Bear, the childhood teddy bear company just launched an adults only website. <laughs> yeah, is, if you want to buy a naughty teddy bear, you must be 18 or older. And our third and final story, we have a new bestie. America's top trade partner isn't China anymore, it's Mexico. So Jack and I are gonna talk about offshoring and nearshoring and friendshoring and reshoring. All the shores, we're covering them all. Are we sure we're gonna talk about all those shores? But besties, before we hit that wonderful mix to start the week. We're sure, and what a fantastic mix to kick off the week, Jack, love it. We know where you're listening right now. You're at home sick, aren't you? You're at home, you're sick, you need a Flonex, a tissue, and a whole box of ibuprofen, baby. Because today, February 12th is one of the sickest days of the year. Today, 16 million Americans are calling in sick. In fact, 10 million Americans already requested the day off. 11 million Americans are also showing up late today. So what is the sudden sickness afflicting the country and preventing us from being at work? Jack, what is the sudden variant that is hitting our immune systems today? It's Super Bowl sickness. 37 million Americans will be late to work or not at work today because of the Super Bowl flu. The day after the Super Bowl. It's the second biggest sick day of the year every year. Because the day after the Super Bowl party is the Super Bowl hangover. That seven layer dip needs another day to digest. Those light beers, uh, they don't feel so light right now. The guac was a little too extra. Jack, why can't the NFL just do the Super Bowl on a Saturday? It makes so much sense. I don't know. Tradition. Dr. Goodell, <laughs> he said so. The NFL is pretty big on old school traditions, Nick. So yeah, it is your secret today. It's safe with us. Besties, rest up today for the team so you can play tomorrow. Cough, cough. I think I'm getting the black lung pop. Talk to me in 22 years. <laughs> it's not very well ventilated on this podcast, Jack. <laughs> yeah, it is. Whether you're working today, not working today, or playing as a backup, starting today because the starter's at home sick. Just put some ice on it and we got your back. Let's hit our three stars. Doctor's note, sign of Jack. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea that caused a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, because we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. The show. For our first story, last week, Disney shockingly invested one and a half billion dollars into the biggest video game on Earth. Why did they do it? Because evolution is easier than creation. Jack, can we open up the book of Bob? In the first two minutes of Disney's earnings call last week, CEO Bob Iger announced a magic kingdom of updates. There were so many updates, I almost choked on a turkey leg, Jack. There was tinker dust everywhere. <laughs> tinker dust is a great <laughs> I'm line. Not sure that's a thing. It's not, but that was perfect. <laughs> 
First, he announced that former Alabama football coach Nick Saban is joining ESPN's college football coverage. Then he announced that Taylor Swift's Eras Tour movie is going to be exclusive on Disney Plus starting March 15th. Finally, he announced that Moana, which was the most streamed movie of 2023, is getting a sequel, Moana 2. The biggest surprise out of all those announcements by far, what was it, Jack? Disney has invested $1.5 billion into Epic Games. They now own 9% of the video game technology company. Yeah, these Epic Games happens to be the owner of Fortnite. And Fortnite happens to be the biggest video game on planet Earth. The new Bob is the old Bob. Wall Street was excited about those Disney announcements. So excited, they boosted Disney stock 13% for its biggest day in the market in years. But Nick and I should point out, Disney isn't just investing in Fortnite. It's basically adopting Fortnite into the family. Disney is going to be sharing all of their Disney IP, their entire Disney family, with Fortnite. And it's got quite an IP collection. Oh, it does. Because remember, Yeti's Disney owns Marvel superheroes and Star Wars action and Pixar movies and Avatar. Indiana Jones, also owned by Disney. The Mighty Ducks, owned by Disney. The Simpsons, owned by Disney. Tinker Dust everywhere. <laughs> Still recovering from the tinker dust inhalation. What we're saying yet is, is that Disney's greatest asset. The characters from their famous movies. Can now be included in Fortnite. The most played video game on earth. Fortnite, the blockbuster online video game that lets you play and interact with other people in a virtual world. Can we repeat that for a second? Fortnite is an online place that lets you play and interact with other people in a virtual world. And not just play and interact, actually, right, Jack? There's some other verbs involved here. On Fortnite, you can play, you can watch, you can create, and you can shop. I'm sorry, Jack. You're going to have to sit down, stand up, and put down the controller. That sounds a lot like... A metaverse. It sounds like a metaverse. It's a metaverse. Fortnite is a headset away from a metaverse. Yeah, it is. If you've seen the movie Ready Player One, then you know what we're talking about. And now Disney's universe is in Fortnite's metaverse. You can change your avatar to Olaf if you want to. But it's going to cost you some tinker dust. <laughs> so, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Disney? Evolution is easier than creation. Now, that is, before you pause the pod, that takeaway, it's got nothing to do with religion. But it has everything to do with innovation. Because in 2021, Mark Zuckerberg announced that he was going to create a metaverse. Zuck called it the next iteration of the mobile internet. And he's been trying to create the metaverse ever since then. He even changed the name of the company to Meta. But it's not been working. In the meantime, Fortnite has evolved into the closest thing we've seen yet to a metaverse. What started as a basic first-person shooter video game now has virtual concerts, it has art galleries, it has hangout zones where you can meet up with your buddies who are also logged in online. Besties, last year, Disney laid off their entire metaverse division. Their job was to create a metaverse. Instead, Disney is grabbing onto Epic Games, which is evolving into a metaverse. Because when it comes to innovation, evolution is easier than creation. For our second story, Build-A-Bear just launched, get this, an adults-only website for adult-only teddy bears. Bears After Dark. It's the perfect example of the velvet rope effect. Yeah, there is nothing more fun than when we whip open the history books. You want to whip open the history books, man? Yeah, the first ever teddy bear was created in 1902, and it was named after then-president Theodore Roosevelt. Well, Jack, what do you think then President Theodore Roosevelt would think about teddy bears today? I think you'd be surprised because the company Build a Bear is at the top of the food chain. Yeah, he's Build a Bear, the customizable teddy bear company, just finished their best year ever. They sold $500 million of customizable teddy bears. Their stock has 5 x in the past five years, and they just opened their 500th Build-A-Bear workshop. And Jack, could you sprinkle on more context for us, please? There's more Build-A-Bears in America today than there are Chuck E. Cheese's. Now, Yetis, you know Build-A-Bear just like any teddy bear. It's a classic kid's toy for children. You'll find a Build-A-Bear workshop at the mall. Right next to Auntie Anne's pretzels, there's going to be a lot of kids screaming of joy and crying in the store. You look at a Build-A-Bear teddy bear and it just feels like a hug. Here's the news. Build-A-Bear's newest product isn't exactly safe for work. Build-A-Bear's newest product is adults only. Adults only teddy bears. Because the new website from Build-A-Bear is called The Bear Cave. And it has a lineup of bears they call Bears After Dark. 
And Jack, let's say I want to go on this website and visit the Bears after dark. Don't act like you haven't done it already. Okay, I did it a few <laughs> times today. And what happens when you go there? You must attest that you're 18 or older. No joke. The website requires the same date of birth attestation as like BudLight.com does. It's like a liquor company, but they're selling teddy bears. So Nick and I were trying to figure out what's going on here. And the first thing we thought of, Cadults. We've told you about Cadults. Yeah, these adults who play with toys. It's become a booming industry for the toy industry. Nick's a Cadult. I'm a Cadult sometimes. 40% of Build-A-Bear sales happen to go to teens and adults. They are Cadults. But Bears After Dark is a new level of escalation. It's a new pursuit of, let's just call them adults, not Cadults. And this ain't no Beanie Baby Jack. <laughs> for example, you can buy a bear who's carrying a bottle of rosé, who's wearing a silk robe, and that robe says, you turn me on. Jack, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm blushing. How about the bear daddy, which comes wearing a bow tie, magic mic cuffs, and heart-shaped boxers? I'm sorry, Jack. Is it getting a little hot in here? It's not just soft. These bears are saucy. It's not just nice. These bears are naughty. Less playtime, more playboy. Yetis, we're not talking about rated R bears. This is like PG-13 teddy bears. It's a gag. You get it for your Valentine's Day as a joke. But still, besties, this is a bold move for Build-A-Bear. They pivoted from focused on child plushness to moderately risque forbidden fruit. It's so close to crossing the line, but they don't really cross the line. No, they don't cross the line. No, they don't cross and the line. I hope we didn't either in our, in our <laughs> description of it on the show. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Build-A-Bear? It's a perfect example of the velvet rope effect. Yetis, there is nothing more annoying than a velvet rope. It means you can't get in. But there's nothing more intriguing than a velvet rope because you want to get in. Yeah, that's the velvet rope effect. Ironically, exclusivity, it drives more engagement. And that's what Build-A-Bear has achieved by gating its adult-only bear content. Yeah, Build-A-Bear could have just added these cheeky bears to their website and they would have sold a bunch of them probably. But by creating a comical website, that pretends to be naughty and requires you to be 18 or older to enter. That is what made Build-A-Bear go viral, and that is why the Wall Street Journal did a front-page piece on the new Build-A-Bears. Bears After Dark demonstrates the power of putting up a velvet rope. For our third and final story with Jack, who is just <laughs> jacked right now, I should remind everyone, America's newest, biggest trading bestie, guess what? It's Mexico. Made in Mexico is the new made in China. But what about Made in USA? But yet, is, since Jack and I were born, frankly, the most popular three words in America were these. Made in China. Made in China. You couldn't open up like a Pringles can without seeing Made in China. It was everywhere. Because America bought more goods from China than any other country. And it was all thanks to a concept called offshoring. CEOs in America spent the 80s, 90s, and 2000s outsourcing factories to China. Because CEOs in America realized they could boost profits and lower prices with China's 1 billion workers. China became the world's biggest factory. That $15 cute top or that $1,500 iPhone, they're both thanks to China. And it's all because of offshoring. Since 2002, the U.S. has imported more from China than any other country in any year Full stop. But here's the news. Last year, Mexico passed China. That's right. Mexico just became our new trading bestie. Because our imports from Mexico rose by 5% last year to $475 billion worth of stuff. But Jack, what did our imports look like from China last year? Imports from China fell by 20% to a level below what we imported from Mexico. Besties, we're talking cars, we're talking computers, we're talking avocados, all of them Mexican-made these days. We're getting most of them, a lot of them, from Mexico. I drive a Volkswagen that's made Mexico. Because Heco in Mexico is the new made in China. So how did Mexico pass China to become America's top trading bestie. How out of nowhere did we wake up over the weekend to discover that Mexico is now our top trading bestie over China? Two reasons, friendshoring and nearshoring. Friendshoring and nearshoring. Friendshoring is when you move production from non-allies. Like China. To allies. Like Mexico. And the trend of friendshoring started with Trump's trade war and accelerated during the pandemic. The other reason is nearshoring. 
it's more reliable if you buy stuff from a country that's right around the corner. Like, remember when we had that shortage of ships during the pandemic, Jack? Or the shortage of Q-tips when we needed those COVID tests during the pandemic? Well, Mexico is just a drive away, and that is a whole lot closer to get to. But all this friend shoring and nearshoring, Nick and I should sprinkle on some context. Economic shifts like this, they happen in decades. They don't happen in years. Moving a factory takes a while. It does. And that's why Apple still has one iPhone factory in China that employs 300,000 people. If Apple has a factory employing the population of St. Louis, it's going to take a while before they can move that. Like James Taylor said, oh, Mexico. So Jack, what's the takeaway for all our buddies who are in Mexico? There's friend shoring, there's near shoring, and then there's reshoring. Yeti's friend shoring was triggered by Trump's trade war. Near shoring was triggered by the pandemic. And those two shorings powered the rise of Made in Mexico. But Jack and I got to ask, what about Made in America? How do we get reshoring? To get reshoring to happen, to get things made in America again, it really requires one key thing government incentives. Yeah, because the number one reason we make stuff in China or Mexico, it's because it's simply more expensive in America. And it's cheaper in China and Mexico. Now, the IRA and CHIPS Acts both gave incentives for businesses to make stuff in America. And that sparked some historic investments in America. Because the number one way to drive reshoring to America, it's financial incentives for business. But Yetis, this pod's not over yet. Here's what else you need to know today. First, for the first time ever, the S&P 500 just closed above 5,000 points. I checked before the show. Stocks are now up 5% from their 2021 high, and they're up 48% from their pre-pandemic highs. Not too shabby. And second, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, wants $7 trillion to make more computer chips to fuel artificial intelligence. Sam Altman is trying to raise $7 trillion, which is more than the value of Apple and Microsoft combined. He thinks we need AI chips that badly. And finally, Hermes, the luxury handbag maker, saw sales surge by 21% last quarter. They keep raising the prices of those Birkin bags, and people just keep buying them. Now, time for the best fact yet. This one sent in by Sarah Thornburg from lovely Potwing, Kansas. Kansas is the home of the largest ball of twine in the world. Jack, can you take us down to Cocker City, Kansas, please? The population of Cocker City is only 457 people, but the ball of twine that it's home to weighs 17,000 pounds. With over 7,938,709 strands of twine. And every August, Kansas hosts a twine-a-thon where people can add to that giant ball of twine. So Kansas City, congratulations on your Super Bowl win. We know you're in Missouri technically, but we know a lot of Kansas folk are fans of the Chiefs. And if you find yourself passing through Kansas or Missouri, stop by Cocker City and BYO Twine. Make that ball bigger. Yetis, you are looking fantastic today. And even though, you know, you're a little bit under the weather, we got your back. 37 million of you get well soon. So while you got that thermometer in your mouth, you can click to follow T-Boy so you get this podcast every day. And if you already followed the show, send it to a buddy. Get well soon. And Jack and I (coughs) will see you tomorrow. And before we go, a happy 29th birthday to Yeti Rakna Takural over in Mumbai, India. Congratulations to Lauren E. Carls, the soon-to-be CPA who's celebrating at Minnesota's finest, the Olive Garden. I'll give the boss a call and let him know you're coming. Put in a pasta order with the big guy, Jack. <laughs> and a happy birthday to Violetta over in San Francisco who's celebrating in the mud baths of Calistoga. And happy 30th birthday to Rebecca Ligori. Jack, Rebecca's celebrating with a ski trip to the Northeast. Any mountain recommendations for her, by the way? Best mountain in Vermont is Sugarbush. Best in New Hampshire is Cannon. But Mount Tremblant up north in Canada That's a nice mountain, too. Can't go wrong with a Killington or a Catamount. But Mad River Glen is literally a co-op, and that's just cool. And the Middlebury Snowball just added Night's King, and that's where (laughs) Nick and I went to call. (laughs) This is Jack. I own stock at Disney, and Nick and I both own stock of Apple. And we both own ETFs of the S&P 500. (laughs) This has been a really funny extended... No, no, I think I think you're um, Yeah, no, I I'm I'm huge. I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> hey John, can we wide lens this thing? <laughs>
Jack's traps aren't fitting in it. <laughs> Look at you. You're at 60% energy. You're at 200% body mass. And you're doing your best pod you've ever done. I don't know how you do it. We did a wide angle. John! <laughs> <laughs>